You are listening to Revealing Real Estate Podcast, where we dive into getting over your fear of taking risk in real estate and making money while you sleep. I'm Nico Pedizano, your host and real estate guru with over 20 years of experience. It's time to get real. All right, welcome to episode two of Revealing Real Estate Podcast. I'm here with your host, Nick Opedisano, and we are going to dive into four starter strategies on how to invest in real estate. Hey, Jess. Well, thanks for uh, having me uh, on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No, it's awesome. Listen, I, I'm glad to have you on uh, on the show, uh, Revealing Real Estate. We are going to really dive into these four main ways or strategies to start investing into real estate. Now, now these are are pretty much my favorite. And I'm going to talk about these these four strategies. Um, I know that this is something that we've been discussing, yep. uh, but I, I feel that these strategies are pretty much the safest ways to get started into real estate investing. And in some cases, with little with a little hard work, you can even you know get started with with a really small down payment, or we we call it within the real estate industry, sorry, downstroke, mm-hmm. right? So very little downstroke on these right on on and just starting out within the business is essential. And I think this will be some really good components to to getting people to really get encouraged. Most people don't invest in real estate or are afraid to make you know or start buying multiple properties because of the fear. Oh, absolutely. And, and what we want to try to educate people is, hey, listen, let's work. Let's look at what the worst case scenario is for you, and mm-hmm. and make you realize that it's not all that scary and it's not all that bad, right? That's great to hear because I know when it comes to investing and taking risks, I'm definitely someone who will like to research a lot just so I know what I'm gonna do is like gonna be successful. And I think when it comes to real estate, because it's such Uh, a big industry Mm -hmm. a lot of people get scared so i think having someone who has experience as you do to explain exactly he hey here are four starter ways that you can invest with really no experience and you can do it as easy as you want i want to make sure that we we understand that to start investing into real estate you need to start you need to generate income right so you you need you need a place you you need a job right or you, you need a business right because you need cash flow uh, banks will only get you approved based on what you would qualify for, and they're going to qualify you for, of course, based on your on your credit score, and, and you know. But they're also going to look at how what what kind of revenue you're generating because if things do go bad or you can't rent out that property or you can't pay your mortgage, mm-hmm. you know, they don't want to be dealing with delinquents. They don't want you to default on your mortgage payments. That's not what the bank is going to finance you for. They want to know that hey, if I'm going to give jessica a mortgage uh, or somebody a mortgage on the, on the property they want to make sure that you're not going to default and make those payments on it right so right. i think that the best way to do this and first and foremost i'm going to speak to those that are generating income and have jobs and maybe have some cash that they've saved um and and have enough money to put down onto a property which will allow them to start investing into real estate mm-hmm. and if you haven't now is the opportunity to do so because based on where the toronto real estate market is currently today yeah. I think you have so much upside and so much opportunity to start generating a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So where we are within the Toronto real estate market, we've seen some really big rock bottoms where between January and February, the, 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 the market really jumped significantly. And now the market prices have come down by 26%. And I think you're going to get some very moderate, you know, drops maybe another two to three percent which is not really significant it really doesn't make that much of a difference so i i feel like hey we may be at the rock bottom of what price points are within the toronto real estate market um if you look at the amount of immigration that's coming within this country uh 400 430,000 people a year we're gonna need housing to support and 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 to supply for for everybody that's coming in within the country mm-hmm. um there's still such a really big demand and there's a shortage of that supply so, you know, it's all about supply and demand in our business. And I think that if people really listen to these key four point strategies that I got to really get you started out within the business, mm-hmm. I think it can get you on the right direction, right? Oh, so yeah. um, what we want to talk about right now, and my first kind of strategy is basically something called house hacking. So for those that haven't heard about what house hacking means, it's basically that you're living inside the home but it also allows you to produce some income, right? So you got a, a house that's a duplex where you can rent out the basement, uh, a triplex, a fourplex, a house with you know extra extra rentable space, 
uh, buying a property close to universities or colleges that you can rent out these rooms or dormitories where you generate some really good revenue stream from it and even living inside the property or have one of your kids live in there. Maybe they're going to university and, and, you know, having some of their friends live in there and rent out rooms as well that you can generate some, some income from it. Right. Um, it's just, you're, you're renting out part of your residence while you're actually, um, living in there, but it's going to reduce the amount of expenses that you have on that property. Right. So they're going to cover certain portions of those utility bills. The, the, you are still responsible for your property taxes, but your gas, your hydro, your water, all that stuff. There's a there, there's a percentage that that tenant would pay. Uh, they pay a percentage of that mortgage. Right. So I know like even for a townhouse, get in a basement with a separate entrance with a kitchen inside there, a bathroom. These townhouses today are generating with the with the rental rates that where we are today is generating eighteen hundred two thousand dollars a month. Wow! So if you got a mortgage payment that's that's forty five hundred dollars a month and you're generating two thousand, well, you're only really responsible for twenty five hundred dollars of that mortgage payment, mm -hmm. but you still own the property, right? You're still paying down towards that principal, and there's such huge upside on it because when it becomes your primary resident, the law states within within Canada that you don't have to pay any tax when you sell that property. So if you ever decide to sell it and the profit and, and, and as the market does increase and inflation rises and the profits, they say are $200,000, that's tax free money. Wow. Right. So imagine putting that on payroll. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, there's a lot of tax savings there on that. Right. So, so if you and the uh, resident are living together, right, you would live in one room, let's say, and let's say they are renting out or they live in the other one yeah you, you'll find that more closer to universities or yes, students right yeah. but what I, I the way that's more common mm -hmm. is if i bought a property i lived upstairs and then i had a tenant living downstairs or sometimes it's reverse you yeah. know so some people would live actually in the basement because they're individually on their own and they'll have somebody live upstairs mm -hmm. right so there's there's some good opportunities on that and they help generate and pay down that mortgage right yeah so would you be paying the same amount yeah, or, so the mortgage is the mortgage, yeah. right? So if I went to go get a mortgage on a property mm -hmm. um, based on what uh, my mortgage amount is and what I qualify for based on my rate, uh, my mortgage uh, payment doesn't change. Okay. So I just generate that rental income. You know, as a real estate agent, we go in there and we qualify. A lot of times you're going to find single uh, single ladies, maybe with two small kids inside that she's working. She's has, she has good employment. She needs a, she needs a house to live in and she's going to be able to generate that income from there, right? And and I think those are really good, you know, house hacking tips mm -hmm. uh, that would really work for for somebody that's that's looking to generate that kind of income. Oh, absolutely. Um, also, you know, there, another one of the tips I really want to discuss is kind of the live in then rent mm -hmm. program, right? Uh, and I talked a little bit about that on the first hacking uh, hacking house hacking strategy is the live-in rent program. Now, well, garden suites have become really essential, a big component of, of the business. But basically, live-in rent is simply living in the house that will eventually become a rental property. Okay. So you're not you're not renting it out during the course of while you're living in there. Okay. Right? Because it's just your primary resident. But you don't, when it's time to upgrade or move into a different property and you built this equity, you just take out the equity and keep that house as your rental property. Okay, okay. Right. So you're never going to replace the value that you purchased it for. Right. And I'll give you a quick story. I bought my house, my first house, sorry, my second house I bought in 2009. Now, the house I ended up picking it up back in at that price point, it was around 650000 The problem, the value, let's just say, is worth about $2 million to $2.5 million today. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to be able to replace that cost value that I purchased it back in the day. Right. So, Let's say at six hundred and fifty, I had a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage on it. The value is worth two is worth two million dollars, mm -hmm. um, and let's just say I never paid off any part of that principal on that mortgage amount, right? I got about one point seven million dollars of equity that I have in that inside that property. Wow! So a bank is going to give you eighty percent loan to value, mm -hmm. meaning if the valuation of that property is two million dollars minus my mortgage amount, which will leave me at one point seven. The bank's going to finance me at 80% of that. So they'll give me 80% of the loan on $1.7 million. Let's just say the bank is willing to give me $1.4, $1.5 million that I'm able to put into my next property, mm -hmm. right? I take that $1.4 million. I keep the current mortgage that I have on that property. Now I got to have a bigger mortgage on it. But remember, I'm going to generate rental income from that, that property. Right. I'm going to take that equity and put it into a secondary property, which is going to allow me to start with, with building that wealth, right? And that's how... 
I've grown um, my real estate portfolio, and that's the process. And I, and I was, we were on a path of doing, a, you know, one a year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm a big believer you shouldn't sell your real estate, right? And and I don't like to sell. People that know me, I don't like to sell my real estate. Now, there, there have been certain components within my life that, that, that I have, you know, made me to take a couple of the, you know, some chips off the table, as we'll say. Uh, but living in, living in, uh, while I lived inside that property, there was the majority of the properties that I ever bought and I lived in, I currently still have, and I rent out. And, uh, and, and I think that is a really good strategy for somebody who's really just wants to start out. Somebody who's even renting right now, mm -hmm. find ways there's programs out there, co-equity partners, find partners that you can actually allow you to get into the marketplace and, um, even if you got to put them in as a 50% partner because they're going to help you with your downstroke and you got to go live in there instead of paying that rent, you know, adding a partner in on a deal is, is really, really essential as well. And I think it's important. Would you prefer doing um, that strategy over the house hacking? Um, yes, mm -hmm. I, I would just because I, I was never one that really wanted a renter or somebody to rent while I was living in there with my family. Yeah. Some people like it. Some people don't. Um, I think that if you don't have a choice and if I couldn't afford to get into a market, but I wanted a bigger home, I don't mind doing it. Right. But I'll be very specific on the tenant that I choose and who's going to move inside that property. Um, just so you can remember you're, you're somebody's living inside that home. So while you're living upstairs, they're going to hear a lot of stuff that's happening, you know, upstairs and you're going to hear a lot of stuff that's happening downstairs. And you know, it's a combination of you living with another family inside there. If it's crucial today. And I think where the market is going um, and, and the unaffordability of housing today, mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be really important that, that people really start considering that program. Absolutely. And now with, uh, the prices and the market, it's going to be hard for people to be kind of picky and choosy with which strategy they want to go to. If that one's going to benefit them more based on how much income they have to work with. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Right. And, 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 you know, and whether you're, it's going to make you allow to keep you to stay within the GTA or move you further north mm -hmm. or in the outskirts. Right. And, you know, it all depends where your family is and all that stuff. So if I had opportunities where it allowed me to stay within, you know, the Vaughn community where I grew up in and, and where I, you know, I've established myself, um, it's just part of my ecosystem. Right. It, 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 then if I had no choice today, you got to remember when I bought my first property, I bought it was a detached house, you know, 2,400 square feet. It was under $400,000 then, right? Yeah. So houses were still extremely cheap. You know, the cost of living did go up, but not extremely that much more. Mm -hmm. If I would have known and I had a crystal ball, mm -hmm. you know, I would have bought a few more of them, right? Yeah. And I think that's where the future of real estate is going in 20 years from now, in five years from now, in 10 years from now, you know, where is the market going to be? And it's, I only see it really going up from here, mm -hmm. uh, especially the amount of growth that's still kind of uh, planned for, for, for Canada and especially for Ontario alone. Oh, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. So, and then, uh, you know, another strategy I, I like to really consider is is the live and flip, right? Yeah. So uh, if you're young, maybe you're not married, um, but you have some equity that you've built up or you've saved uh, and you're working and you can qualify for a mortgage right now, is maybe finding a wholesale deal. And we'll talk about wholesale deals maybe in another episode, mm -hmm. right? But um, good opportunities out there where you can save some money on good taxes and generate some really good income on it, which will allow you to get to where you need to be a lot quicker, mm -hmm. is by is by getting into these live-in flips. So you buy the property. Of course, you have to live in there. So law states that you got to live in there for at least 12 months to okay. become your primary resident. If you sell it before a 12-month period, then you're going to be paying income tax if you sell it because now the government's going to say, okay, well, you're doing it as a business. You've generated income from it yeah. and now you're, you're, you're making money from it. And I think now more than ever are really good opportunities for people to start doing it because you're getting houses at a really good discount right now. Mm -hmm. So I'll go in there and, and live inside that property or even if you had a family, live inside that property. Now fix the property while you live in there, right? So if the basement needs it to be rental, you live upstairs, rental the basement, fix it all up, right? Move downstairs. Mm -hmm. As you move downstairs, start fixing upstairs, right? So through that process, it should take you, generate you six to 12 months to, to do all that work. After you're all set and complete, put it back on the market and you flip it and generate some income from it, okay? Uh, and then, you know, start building it again. Maybe you do it again. You know, there's only so many times you're going to be able to do it. Maybe now you have built in so much equity that you can get into something that has 
you know, a duplex or a triplex where it's generating and re bringing you that revenue stream. And you're able to now reconvert that and start building your real estate wealth through that process. Mm -hmm. But I think that is really where um, you can you can start building it really quick, fast, and and get to where you want to be, you know, at, at a more rapid pace. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple, and I think it's a lot lower risk, right? There's a lot yeah. there's a lot of things that you can do with your money um, that you can start investing. That's higher risk, higher return. But you got to remember, it all depends on your risk threshold, right? And and this is just the beginning, the starter points. So this will just help people to to remove that fear, as we discussed, and and have them start investing into real estate at a very early or at a very early time, and then and then and then build it from there, right? So uh, those are those are very very those are three key key essential points right now. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you ever done this strategy, the um, the flip strategy? No. Uh, I remember when I bought my first house uh, with my wife when I got married back in 2004, we uh, we ended up fixing up that house and then eventually ended up selling it. And we were living inside the house and fixing it up slowly through that process. So would you consider that as part of it? Probably. But again, we stayed in there for more than a year. I think it was about five, six years before we went to our next property, right? Wow. So we, we bought that one in 2004. By 2009, mm -hmm. I essentially ended up picking up my second home buying that one but then through the course we ended up buying an investment property that was up in brampton that had that uh, was a duplex that you know was generating income from the top and the bottom mm -hmm. which was helping you know really pay down that mortgage we were making about you know a thousand a month wow. which was covering you know many other payments through that process to get yeah. us through that hump that thousand dollars a month uh was paying my line of credit that i ended up getting on my first initial investment um and I was putting that toward the, any profits that I made through that rental income were going towards burning down that line of credit when I essentially when I essentially got it. And that's the key is is making that sacrifice to put that money aside to burn down good debt. Mm -hmm. And I always consider that as good debt through the process, right? Oh, absolutely. Because once you start making that profit, all that work is is just going to be worth it when you start being able to put that money in your pocket instead of towards debt that you've that you've paid off. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and then I'll talk about the fourth one, which I really like. Mm -hmm. And and this is something that I still currently work with today. Because I, I look at real estate, and any anytime I, I'm going to invest into real estate today, majority of my deals are done on a long-term basis, right? I do get into now fix and flips. Mm -hmm. um, I deal with a, with a, with a strategic wholesaler um, on those particular deals. Um, but, but the ones that I really like, the one, the, the, the homes that are close to me, I like to look at them, you know, with, with longevity and I take a lot of pride in my real estate that I own. And there's certain properties that I want to keep and maintain within my real estate portfolio, uh, which we call them burrs, right? In our industry, burrs. they're called burrs. Yeah. B R R R R. <laughs> so there's four R's and a burr. So what that really means is that it, it, it's, it's, you buy it, you remodel it, you refinance it, you repeat it. Okay, so um, again, once I buy it, I'm going to remodel that house. Mm -hmm. I'm going to refinance it on it. When I when I go to refinance it, because I've remodeled it, my appraised value is going to actually come in higher than what I paid for it, mm -hmm. right? I, and a lot of my deals that I pick up are a lot of on the wholesale side of things now. But even on the market, I can find some really good opportunities out there that that the homes need a lot of TLC and they need some some build up towards it. And I'll go in there, and once I get it reappraised, and my and I, and I, and I get refinancing, the bank is going to give me now eighty percent loan to value. So, for mathematical purposes, mm -hmm. if I bought the property for eight hundred thousand, and I got a mortgage on there for six hundred thousand, mm -hmm. let's just say, right? So my downstroke was two hundred thousand, and then I I put in the renovation work of a hundred thousand. And the renovation comes out to a, you know, after the renovation, my refinancing comes out to a million minus my $300,000 mortgage on there, right? I'm going to now get refinanced on 700000 At 700000 I take out 80% loan to value on that, mm -hmm. right? And and whatever equity that bank is going to refinance me on, I'm going to take it. I'm going to pull out that equity. I like to keep about 20% inside my properties majority of the time. Okay. I'll take out that equity and then I'll re-put it into another property. That is going to allow me to start building up my real estate portfolio a lot quicker and a lot faster by initially always using my 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 original downstroke that I bought, right? And mm -hmm. all it is is just continuously pulling that out and building that equity. If you can get to that place faster because inflation starts to rise, and that's why I say now is a really good time, mm -hmm. 
I can start doing instead of one a year, I can probably do two a year, right? Now, based on, on your approvals, but if an A lender is not going to look at you, I'll look at a B lender. And if a B, do, B lender doesn't look at me, I'm going to look at a private. As long as I'm making my returns, it doesn't matter, right? Because I'm still generating income using other people's money. I'm using the bank's money to generate that money. I'm not even using my own money. My initial investment that I've made on those properties, I pulled out. Mm-hmm. I've taken back and I just keep building it into another property, keep building it in there. And as, as people pay down my mortgages and as I do the work inside these properties to increase that, that, that value, I'm able now to abstract that money and continuously build so I can get into two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's what you want to continue building. And that's where people have really built their real estate wealth and their portfolio. And and that's what I really want to encourage for people to start doing, right? So, so burrs, I love them, right? Because it initially allows you to get to that place a lot faster. Now, what happens is what's your end goal, right? The end goal on all this, and I'll leave off with this, mm-hmm. is that, you know, eventually by the time I get to 65 or 70 years old and, and I'm tired and I want to retire, um, I can take certain pro- these properties, you know, sell them because their their value has gone up. We know in 20 years they're going to be worth a lot more, oh, yeah. right? So I, I plan at, at 65 in 20 years from now to have majority of these properties paid off, right? My amortizations, I don't like to take them over 20, 20 years, but if I have to, I go 25-year amortizations, which will tell me, say, hey, listen, 20 years, your property will be paid off. If they're not paid off, whatever properties I have built in a lot of equity, I'll sell maybe two or three to pay off all those mortgages so I don't have any mortgages on the properties. Now when I'm retired, I'm just generating all this revenue mm-hmm. and I really don't have to work anymore, Yeah. right? And and that's kind of my retirement plan. Yeah. And that's what that's what is really, you know, my goal for my future and where I want to be. So mm-hmm. um, I think those are really good essential key points to starting out within the business. Absolutely. And I think it's amazing to have those goals to want to feel comfortable for the future and for your family for generations to come. Um, And I think these four key starter strategies are so good and informative to hear, especially someone who's in her 20s, you know, um, investing is scary until you break it down. And and then you kind of, you know, get that confidence to be like, okay, maybe I can invest. And um, I wanted to end with asking you, For all the listeners out there who are scared to take the risk in investing, what's one key advice you can give them to kind of get over that fear? I think that what most people worry about when it comes to real estate investing is all the what ifs. Mm -hmm. What if this happens or what if, you know, my tenant doesn't pay me my rent or what if, um, you know, I can't find a tenant? What if they damage my house and then it's going to cost me more? Um, in In the long run, uh, everything is a risk. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't risk though out there, you're not going to really receive the rewards that you're going to need. But you got to think of yourself, you got to think about it as what's the worst case scenario um, out there? And, uh, you know, what? what's the worst case scenario for somebody? Mm-hmm. And the worst case scenario would be that, you know, that you can't find a tenant. Well, I can tell you this much. If you list a house on the market today, you're going to get multiple offers on on properties, right? Because with the with the lack of supply that's currently out there within the market and the demand that's there, rental rates have gone through the roof. And in some cases, we're getting four, five, six offers to come in on the property. So I, I, I and I think, well, what happens if they damage the place? Well, if you really spent the money and hired a good team around you and had a good real estate agent to really, you know, scrutinize that tenant and and really look into their history and where they work, you know, who their previous landlord was, you know, getting their, 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 uh, um, you know, uh, a criminal record even on them. I would go as far as getting a criminal record on them. I want to know if I'm renting and <laughs> renting out to there. That's, there's no discrimination <laughs> towards that, but I want to know if I'm doing that. Yeah. And I think, I think the horror stories come in from people that really don't do the homework and hire the right professional to, to, to screen out that tenant mm-hmm. so that you're not dealing with those horror stories. Right. And, and I, and I've never really, I've gone through one property and, but this tenant was really savvy, uh, and they were really professional. Um, but but I think if we can remove that from from making you understand that if you do things the right way and you hire the right people to guide you through the process, it can simplify things for you, and it's going to relieve so much stress from from the process as well. Yeah. Right. Well, that's great. I think that's awesome, and I feel more comfortable. I feel a little confident now. Maybe <laughs> I, maybe I will invest in real estate. Well, that's uh, listen. <laughs> and if you don't have the down payment yourself right now. 
right? For somebody who's young, you're in your 20s right now, right? So, so you know, you, you haven't purchased a property yet at this no. point in time, and you're a really good example. Why not get together if you have a sibling, a sister, or a brother, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I wish I started this earlier on with my brothers is, is you know, if I had 20,000, you have 20,000, mm-hmm. so, you know, and you can start that. Maybe if you got fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, what could we do together, right now to, to start getting into the market. You have a job, your brother has a job, yeah. right? And and you, you you can qualify on that mortgage. Maybe you have a parent that's going to sign as a guarantor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these are, these are situations that you can put yourself in. And my advice to you is look at other alternatives, get creative to see if, if there are options for you to get into the real estate market. And then, because I think that as the market does grow, that's where really you're going to build your financial wealth, mm-hmm. right? And I, and I think I think that that would be a really good start for you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, so. thank you so much. That, no problem. That was no an problem. awesome episode. I I can't wait to hear episode three. I know you have some great guests coming on the show, so um, I would get really excited if I was a listener. Online. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys. I thank you all for listening to the show. Uh, we're gonna have some really wonderful guests coming on to episode three, four, five. Um, we, 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 this is going to be awesome. Thank you for listening in and look forward to catching up with you guys soon. Looking to buy or sell? Call a team you can trust. Don't believe me? Our Google reviews say it all. Put us on your lawn. Your house will be gone. The OPteam.com.